whole world doesn't matter to Lou. The gym matters the most. And if anything got in the way of that gym, it's just gone. He is the last samurai of weightlifting. A tiny dingy warehouse, dead in the middle of Ohio, is home to world champions and record holders. Westside Barbell has become legendary for its brutal form of strength training. The gym's founder, Louis Simmons, is the godfather of American powerlifting, and people from all over the world come here to study his methods. How did you get started in powerlifting? I just wanted to be strong, and I had, um, well, you know, I, low self-esteem probably. I didn't have much and, uh, growing up, and so I got in a lot of, a lot of fights. But weights turned me around. It gave me self-confidence. Why is the gym now in Columbus and not out west or, or any, anywhere else? Because I live here. And you know, where's the Shaolin Temple? People go to Shaolin Temple, the Shaolin Temple don't go to them. There is no more respected or controversial voice in strength sports than Louis Simmons. As a competitive powerlifter for over 50 years, he's ranked elite in five different weight classes and was a top 10 lifter for over 30 years. In 1987, he started Westside Barbell, and lifters began seeking Louis out for his advice. He quickly gained notoriety for his unconventional training methods and machines, along with his embrace of steroids and other performance-enhancing drugs, which is something he did not want to discuss with us, but has addressed unapologetically in the past in an interview with Joe Rogan. I went on antibiotics January 1970. 1970. Never, uh, 1970. And uh, so what is this, 2016? Yeah. I've never been off. See, it's not against the rules to take drugs. It's against the rules to get caught taking drugs. Louis has stated in interviews and on the West Side website that he does consulting for a number of NFL and college football teams. However, powerlifting is the gym's primary focus, and lifters deemed worthy by Louis are taken under his wing to train for free. I've been here for seven years, and I think I've probably been around Lou more than everyone else. And I mean, the man, he lives in his own world, and he just rejects everything outside of it. Like, what, what would matter? Like, What's your name? He doesn't care. If you lift numbers, he cares about that. That's more important. So what's the difference between this gym and then other gyms across America? There's a lot of difference in this gym. This is a club. My accountant told me I spend $1,500 a month for buying breakfast. First thing in the morning at 6 o'clock, we all eat breakfast together four times a week, and we discuss training. Then we come here and train. That's a big difference. You know, uh, too many gyms, you go to a gym and you leave, you never see the guy again. These guys are uh, pretty much buddies, and everyone is for everybody here. Go. Good. How did you know that you wanted to become a coach and make the switch from just a lifter into actually helping other people lift better? I didn't. I always wanted to be a lifter, you know. But then when guys started coming, so of course I had to guide them along, and that's how we came up. How do people become members here? Um, they come in for a tryout. And you gotta have the body, like, you know, be honest, we'd never let you in here, just as you yeah. fight, right? Yeah. But you know, you, you gotta have a body like that, and then you have to be able to do the mental training. Every day you gotta do this freaking thing over and over, and it gets harder and harder. So, but you got enough nuts to go until you got nothing left. It's all mental. Louis lifters come from a variety of backgrounds. There's former athletes, construction workers, prison guards, and college academics. The common thread among many of them, though, is a troubled past, whether it be prison stints or drug addiction. How did you find powerlifting? Why did you get into it? Uh, keep myself out of trouble. I was fucked up and all that shit. And well, what do you mean fucked up? Like, so I was a, addicted to opiates. I'm seven years clean in September. But I've lived away since I was a kid, and I went to the penitentiary, and I started powerlifting in prison. What did you go to jail for? Oh, everything, man. Yeah. Possession with intent, attempted murder, aggravated robbery, first degree assault, a yeah. whole bunch of stuff when I was young. That was a long time ago. So was, was powerlifting a factor in you just like redirecting that energy into something more positive? It, yeah, I figured I was in there, you know. I might as well lift weights and get big. I wanted to come where the strongest guys train and be under him. I mean, the window's closing for me. I'm 42. But I wanted to spend this the last years here to bring out the best. I used to drive from Indianapolis to here, which is three hours, two and a half, three hours to train, and did that for four years. And we finally said, fuck it, and we moved up here. You got the best fucking teacher and mad scientist in there. That old motherfucker knows all sorts of shit. <laughs> Louis spent decades idolizing Soviet and Eastern European athletes, combing through translations of their secretive training manuals. 
He bases West Side's training largely on Russian and Bulgarian systems, which he feels produces not only strength, but true grit. Louis uses a lot of unconventional methods and machines not seen anywhere else. This is a real deal right here. Feel that? It's a great for lateral movement. Oh, it's tremendous. Like I feel it really strengthening my feet. Mm -hmm. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming forward this way. I'm keep trying, coming. I can't. Louis' okay. cult of personality transformed West Side from a local gym into a brand name. But that hasn't stopped West Side from being accused of cheating. Their brash confidence and steroid use naturally draws a lot of hate online. Though not all the guys at the gym are juicing, the ones we spoke to were unapologetic about their use. What do you think about that, like the controversies with drugs and all that stuff? Like, do, do you have any opinions on that? Yeah, fucking come see us. If it's a drug thing, cool, man. I'll tell you what I fucking take. And you can take it, you can see if you can do what we can do. People think we get judged easier because we're from West Side. We get judged harder because people already have that perception. Powerlifting competitions are broken into two categories, drug tested and non-drug tested. It's the same lifts and judging, the only difference is one organization makes you pee in a cup and the others do not. The splitting competitions happened in 1983 with the formation of the American Drug-Free Powerlifting Federation, breaking away from the United States Powerlifting Federation, which had become overrun with drug use. Over time, more federations formed, and today there are currently 19 powerlifting leagues. Seven test, 12 do not. Shit, as far as the substances go, if you want to take drugs, take drugs. Yeah. If you don't want to take drugs, don't take drugs. I respect all forms, raw, drug-free, use drugs, do whatever the fuck you want, snort cocaine on the platform, I don't give a fuck, but I don't keep be in drug-free federations. This gym has broke close to 140 all-time world records. These are top five totals uh, for Coker in uh, 181, uh, 98, and 220. That board is my life right there. That's all my friends, all my memories, and all the accomplishments that I've ever done to people in here. And uh, that's all I care about. A lot of times you're lifting for the old man. Lifting for him is a driving force. He'll never admit it, but he wants us to succeed. And the old man's getting old, you know? There's certain things that I want to accomplish while he's still here. <laughs> What does it take to break a world record? You gotta be willing to endure pain because you're gonna have setbacks, you're gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna tweak muscles. You know, I've broke my back three times, I've fucking blown my fucking biceps off, ruptured discs, fucked my neck up, I can't feel shit in this hand half the time, and I still do what I do and I'm still going. For all the training and abuse to their bodies, the reality is powerlifting isn't a financially lucrative sport. After you factor in all the costs, most lifters actually end up losing money. There's no monetary value to this shit. Like, we're basically kicking the shit out of ourselves just because we love it. When I got the invite to come out here, and people don't really get it, you know? And they're like, well, what are they gonna pay you? What are they? It's like, we don't fucking get paid. Maybe I'm fucked up, but the more beat up and hurt I am, the more I enjoy what I do. I crawl to the bathtub in the morning because I can't stand up straight. That's when you find out what you're really made of. After spending time with Louie and the guys at Westside, it became clear that this gym is absolutely everything to them. Above it all, the controversy, the hard exteriors, and the hard lives, the gym is a place for them to feel like they belong to something. If you weren't doing this, what would you be doing? If I wasn't lifting weights? Yeah, if you weren't here, lifting I'd weights. I'd be with fucking you. dead or in trouble somewhere. I can't imagine walking away from it. I'll be here till I'm either in a wheelchair or dead. A lot of people think that I'm a little off, but it doesn't matter because my mind's on one thing. And if a man's mind's on one thing, I'm like a samurai, can never straighten away. When I go, I'll be in that room, the, the dead men room, you know, hanging on that wall. The west side till I die.